Hi, this is Guy Wallace with another video in my series, Adventures in Performance-Based Training and Development, with your host, me, Guy Wallace. Note I've also subtitled this series, The Insomnia Solution, <clears throat> but not for my insomnia, for yours. Just kidding. In this video, I'm going to address structured OJT and unstructured OJT. OJT, of course, stands for on-the-job training. Think of it as an apprenticeship model, an approach to developing people through coaching. In my approach to curriculum architecture design, since way back in 1982, I've been using three key deployment strategies for my modular instruction, all on a training and development path, each module or each training and development event with a potential mix of media. So those three deployment modes, if you will, are group-paced, self-paced, and coached. The coach deployments are either structured OJT or unstructured OJT. This was intended to signal to my clients in their review of the suggested sequence of training and development events on a path, a learning continuum, if you will, indicating the type of instruction and especially the mode that has major implications for their organizations in getting their people trained on job tasks to produce worthy outputs and whether or not that's going to be easily done or not. Uh, this has always been important to my clients as they used my CAD methods, curriculum architecture design, to help them reorganize their current situation regarding how they develop their key people in key critical business processes. Group Paste, of course, is a scheduled training and development event, either face-to-face, -face, traditional classroom training, sometimes called ILT, instructor-led training, or it's delivered using the internet, such as scheduled webinars or MOOCs. SP, self-paced, is a training and development event available anytime, on demand. It can include recorded webinars, just as back in the day, face-to-face -face classroom training was sometimes recorded to be able to share that with others who weren't able to attend the original event. But self-paced can include books, articles, brochures, vendor manuals and materials, and recorded webinars, audio podcasts, videos, all delivered to desktops, laptops, tablets, and smartphones today. And now even in texts are in the mix. Texts that can be deployed to be reviewed anytime via smartphones and smart watches even. The technology is ever evolving and has been since I got in the business in 1979. Coach training and development is a little bit different. It's either structured on the job training or unstructured on the job training. That 20 years after I started calling it this became better known as informal learning, that unstructured OJT. Although that phrase's definition seems to vary between really informal or semi or quasi informal. Sometimes people include using job aids, performance support as part of informal learning. But those are engineered to be instructive, to instruct somebody in performing the tasks to produce worthy outputs, as Gilbert called it. Or as I like to call it, uh, performing tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. That's performance competence. Structured OJT is deployed and delivered using either any coach or designated or certified or qualified coaches. Sometimes structured OJT can be facilitated by just any coach, whether that's your supervisor, a peer, some other subject matter expert, somebody who knows the content, the context, the performance. Usually it's not about topics, it's still about tasks. It's still instructive. Other times, learning uh, required requires not just any coach, but a qualified or certified coach. Maybe it's the critical nature of the high-stakes performance that's being addressed, performance with high risks and or high rewards, or it may be contractual say when delivering some vendors problem-solving process and materials, etc. Sometimes they insist that those materials be delivered by somebody that they have certified to be worthy of doing so. I read not too long ago that structured OJT was a phrase first coined in 1995 
Well, I know that wasn't true, so I dug through my digital files and paper files to find a 1988 use by me in my firm's quarterly newsletter. I also knew that I used that phrase in client deliverables going back to the early 1980s, but those references were not available to the public at large. They were contained in client proprietary materials, the analysis and design documents that I produced as part of my curriculum architecture design projects, and or in my level of ADDI, which I call MCD, Modular Curriculum Slash Acquisition. Um, either we're developing content or requiring it and using it as is or after modification, etc. But I used coached when I was trying to avoid group paced training, but that the instruction needed somebody else involved and so self paced wouldn't do, even though I'd been encouraged way back in 1981 when I was at Motorola by Bill Wigginhorn who asked that all of us, me and my peers, uh, there were 13 of us training project supervisors at Motorola back in the day, he asked that we look towards converting anything that could have been group paced, if it could possibly be developed self paced, let's do that. He was hearing from the field, our clients at high levels in the organization that our tendency to develop group paced training was not meeting their needs for flexibility to get what they needed when they needed it. They'd have to wait for a scheduled class to roll around and hope that it wasn't already filled and it was annoying to them. So I began a kick back in 1981 to move everything I possibly could to self-paced. In fact, when I'm in my projects and meeting with the project steering team at the various gate room uh, review meetings, I'm often declarative in telling them, if you don't stop me, which is their signal to pay attention because maybe they do want to stop me, if you don't stop me now, I'm going to convert everything that can be into self-paced training possible. I'm not going to rely on group-paced training, I'm going to move everything I can to self-paced and they like that. But self-paced training doesn't uh, enable one to get the proper feedback when we're doing practice. So practice with feedback is important. Corrective feedback, reinforcing feedback, uh, sometimes sophisticated e-learning might be able to do that depending on the nature of what's being taught, what, what skills are being taught. Not, not the knowledge level, but the skills or the application of knowledge and skills towards some set of performance tasks leading to a worthy output. Um, so, I, so I've been on this kick uh, to move it all to self-paced, but structured on-the-job training was um, something in the middle ground, so to speak, because it needs to be scheduled, but it's usually much more flexible. You can call up a coach and ask that they coach somebody using structured OJT or even unstructured OJT approaches and teach the people what they need to learn in order to be able to do the jobs. And that coach could work with one person, a few people, a half dozen, a dozen, but pretty soon it becomes group-based training. Um, but there's that need out there in the world of work to get the job done to instruct people as soon as possible, as soon as they have the need. Not way before the need, not way after the need, but just in time, so to speak. Sometimes unstructured OJT is actually the way to go. Name it and that's it. Uh, naming it allows it to go on the training development path, for example. Uh, how to change the toner in the local copy machine might be the title of one of the modules, the training and development events, or a lesson within an event, but you're not going to spend another nickel on it. And clients like to hear that kind of uh, business decisions uh, integrated with uh, instructional design decisions. Um, sometimes it's just not worthy and there might be a variety of copy machines out there and even though Guy, the learner, the participant in training, the performer out there needs to know how to do that, it doesn't warrant spending dollars, shareholder equity dollars, on that kind of instruction. That's best left to what's nowadays known as informal learning, something again I've been calling unstructured OJT since 1982 when I was doing my curriculum architecture design work. So it's really trial and error um, and that can be facilitated through just informal learning in its purest sense. Guy's 
trying to figure it out and using whatever he can find and maybe there's a label on the copy machine once you open the right door etc or it could be social learning where I've asked my neighbor the person in the cubicle next to me or I called somebody up or I got on the internet and, and had a chat with them about you know how do I do this um, and socially I can learn that but again there's no structure provided there's no guidance or job aid or performance support that's surprised it's just really social learning again or it's just guy out there trying to wing it figure it out on his own and hopefully he doesn't destroy the copy machine uh, angering all of his uh, peers but if the performance has medium to high risk to reward structured OJT is a better route it provides the structure for both the participants often called the learner and for the coach or facilitator or the neighbor whoever's been given the task of uh, instructing guy in uh, some set of performance tasks to lead to an output that's being guided by the structured OJT so the components of structured OJT in a coach's guide would include what is the on-the-job training assignment providing an overview and what's the intent uh, maybe at preparation steps and resources that need to be gathered before doing that how to actually deploy the instruction to the learner to the performer um, and then I would give the coach exactly what I'm giving the learner so I would include everything that's in a learner slash performer guide and then I would give them the steps for completion now that can be done very rigorously, very detailed, or it can be very high level. It depends on the culture, what people are used to, and what they want. I let master performers guide me in those kinds of decisions in terms of what level does this need to go to. And there might be a standard level that you would default to, and then there are for special cases when things are uh, much more critical, much higher risk, maybe you give additional detailed guidance in all of this to make sure that it gets done absolutely right. For the learner or performer's guide, I would include an overview and the intent, same thing that you're given the coach, uh, their preparation steps and resources. Maybe there's pre-readings for them to do. Maybe there's something that they need to gather so when the coach shows up, they're ready for it. Um, what the structured OJT preparation and completion tasks are to as an advanced organizer so they know what to expect. You know, there's a rule number one out of many rule number ones, and that is allow no surprises. Um, I try to demystify what's going to happen through advanced organizers and such so that people are mentally prepared for what they're going to be going through, what they're going to experience, which is the hip phrase of the day for all of this. And then there's post-completion mandates and recommendation. Perhaps after the structured OJT event happens, there's going to be some on-the-job application back in the real world and perhaps that needs to be looked at by the coach or by the supervisor who might share the coach's role a bit depending on how you set this all up. So I've designed and developed more complex structures for structured OJT when it warranted it. And again, I let the master performers on my analysis team and design teams tell me how far this really needs to go. And of course, one should always pilot test it to make sure that they're right. I mean, just because you ask a group of master performers and they all come to consensus on something doesn't make them right. Pilot testing will either prove it in or prove it out as to being uh, adequate to the need. Some cultures like a lot of structure and others prefer a lot less. So you're going to have to kind of go with that flow, if you will. The level of depth of structure is determined in my second or third levels of ISD after a curriculum architecture design effort. Uh, it's either in MCD, modular curriculum development, where I'm, uh, my process is basically intended to do a traditional kind of ADDI approach. But there are times when we're not going to have to jump through all the hoops. We're not going to produce uh, a traditional training, if you will, whether that's a webinar delivered on the internet or a MOOC or something else. Um, this is when we're going to go after what I used to call performance aids after job aids because too much of the performance that I was doing analysis of involved many different roles, many different jobs. So it seemed funny to call things job models and job aids when I was looking at something that was a little bit broader. So I tended to call these things performance models and performance aids. But again, I've added to the confusion of, you know, another name for basically the same old thing. Um, 
So the, the a structured OJT session, if you will, is really a mini group paced session. And it can be supported in the same way with uh, materials. It could include looking at some self-paced things as as pre-readings, as pre-viewings, as pre-listening. When you listen to an audio podcast or review a video or you read some uh, certain number of pages in a book or an entire article or uh, sections of a vendor manual, whatever, whatever the case may be, so that you don't waste the time of the coach doing things that could have been done outside of that group paced coached process. So in summary, my approach is to classify my modes of delivery, modes of deployment, as either group paced, self paced, or coached. And again, coach can be done via structured OJT and unstructured OJT, also known as informal learning. I use one of those three, including coached approaches, to try to better ensure the outcomes, the learnings, the transfer back to the real world, back on the job. To impact performance competence back on the job. Otherwise, why bother in the first place? This is Guy Wallace with another video in my series, Adventures in Performance-Based Training and Development, with your host, me, Guy Wallace. And nope, I've also subtitled this series, The Insomnia Solution, but not for my insomnia, for yours. Just, just kidding. Cheers.